In this video, we're diving straight into how corporations handle ownership, equity, and profits, the real backbone of business finance. You'll see exactly how shares are issued, what happens when dividends are paid, and how retained earnings tell the story of a company's growth. No fluff, just clear visual breakdowns of corporate accounting that every serious accounting student and future professional must understand. If you've ever been confused by terms like common stock, paid in capital, or treasury shares, this is the video that'll finally make it click. A corporation is a business structured as a separate legal entity. It exists apart from its owners. Ownership is divided into shares of stock, which can be bought, sold, or transferred. That means limited liability. Shareholders aren't personally responsible for company debts or losses. Corporations can raise large amounts of capital by issuing stock to investors, making them ideal for long-term growth. In accounting, this creates a unique equity structure, separate from sole proprietorships or partnerships, and that's exactly what we'll unpack in this video. When you look at a corporation's balance sheet, the equity section is made up of several key components. Common stock represents ownership shares held by investors. It can have a par value, like $1 per share, or no par, depending on the company's charter. Preferred stock is another class of shares. It often comes with fixed dividends and has priority over common stock during liquidation. Additional paid-in capital, or APIC, is the extra amount investors pay above par value when buying stock. It's still equity, but separate from the base value of shares. Then there's retained earnings the accumulated profits a company keeps instead of paying out as dividends. Lastly, we have treasury stock. These are shares the company repurchases from shareholders. They reduce total equity and are not considered assets. Together, these accounts tell the story of how a corporation is funded and how it's performed over time. When a corporation issues shares, it's bringing in cash in exchange for ownership. Let's look at two common scenarios. A company issues 1,000 shares at $10 each, and the shares have a par value of $1. That's a total of $10,000 raised. Here's how the journal entry looks. Debit cash, $10,000. Credit common stock, $1,000. Credit additional paid-in capital, APIC, $9,000. The common stock reflects the par value only, $1, 1,000 shares. The rest, the amount paid above par, goes into APIC. Now imagine the company issues stock with no par value, but assigns a stated value of $1 per share. It sells 500 shares at $8 each. Total cash received is $4,000. Debit cash, $4,000. Credit common stock, $500. Credit APIC, $3,500. Again, the stated value goes to common stock, and the rest goes to APIC. Whether it's par or stated value, the process is the same. You're separating the base legal capital from the extra paid-in capital. Dividends are how corporations return profits to shareholders. There are two main types, cash dividends and stock dividends. And they're recorded differently. Let's start with a cash dividend. There are three key dates to remember. Date of declaration, when the board announces the dividend. Date of record, who gets it, no journal entry. Date of payment, when the cash goes out. Example, the company declares a $2,000 dividend. On the date of declaration, debit retained earnings, $2,000. Credit, dividends payable, $2,000. This reduces retained earnings and creates a liability. On the date of payment, debit dividends payable, $2,000. Credit cash, $2,000. The liability is cleared and the cash is paid out. Now for a stock dividend. Instead of paying cash, the company issues new shares to shareholders. Let's say it's a 10% stock dividend on 1,000 shares and the market price is $10 per share. On the declaration date, 
Debit retained earnings, $1,000. Credit common stock, $100. Credit APIC, $900. The total value comes out of retained earnings. The par value goes to common stock, and the rest goes to APIC. Just like when issuing new shares. The company isn't spending cash, but it's still reducing retained earnings. Dividends may look simple, but each type has its own accounting impact, and they directly affect equity. Retained earnings is where a corporation's profits are reinvested. It starts with net income from the income statement. That's the company's earnings after expenses and taxes. From there, you subtract dividends paid to shareholders. The remaining balance? That stays in the business, to fund growth, pay down debt, or prepare for the future. Here's the core formula. Beginning retained earnings plus net income minus dividends equals ending retained earnings. This calculation appears on the statement of retained earnings, and the final number flows into the equity section of the balance sheet. Retained earnings helps investors and managers assess how much of the business's profit is being reinvested versus returned to shareholders. It's a signal of long-term strategy. Treasury stock is when a company buys back its own shares, reducing the number of shares available on the market. It's not an asset. It's a contra equity account. It reduces total equity on the balance sheet. Most companies use the cost method to record treasury stock when buying back shares, debit, treasury stock, credit, cash. Example, if a company buys back 500 shares at $20 each, debit, treasury stock, $10,000, credit, cash, $10,000. When reissuing shares above cost, debit, cash, credit, treasury stock, credit, additional paid in capital, APIC, if reissued below cost, the difference is debited to APIC, or if APIC is exhausted, to retained earnings. Buying back stock can signal confidence, increase earnings per share, or prepare for stock-based compensation plans. Don't fall into these traps. Forgetting par value or using the wrong amount when calculating additional paid-in capital, APIC. Always double-check the share structure. Thinking treasury stock is an asset, it's not. It's a contra equity account, reducing total shareholders' equity. Mixing up dividend dates. Only the date of declaration triggers a journal entry. Date of record is just informational, and date of payment is when cash leaves the company. Briefly, stock splits can confuse new learners. They change the number of shares and par value, but not total equity. Just remember, no journal entry is needed for a split, only a memo note. Corporations bring more complexity, but also more opportunity. Here's what matters. Issuing stock raises capital. Dividends share profits. Retained earnings grow the company. Treasury stock reduces equity, not increases. If this helped clarify corporate equity, drop a like, hit subscribe, and leave a comment if you want a full breakdown of stock splits, preferred dividends, or how to prepare the statement of stockholders' equity. You're building a solid accounting foundation, one topic at a time, 